So I'm not, I, I wasn't asked to be either bullish or bearish about robo-advice. In fact, um, the term robo-advice is one that was coined by the media. Um, I don't know if you saw, but recently Adam Nash, the CEO of uh, Bet uh, Wealthfront, not Betterment, Wealthfront uh, was uh, quoted as saying, uh, you don't refer to Expedia as a robot travel agent, so why is it that we're being referred to as robo-advisors? Um, but really, my brief was to share with you our experience in the US. And before you ask, um, I know we're not at question time yet, but before you ask, we're not looking to launch this in the UK. <laughs> because unfortunately, it's not as easy as putting the solution in a box and carrying it over the Atlantic uh, to this country. Uh, but any case, I will share with you some of our experiences. Before I go on, I mean, Ross did a great job of covering the landscape. Um, so this is my Mickey Mouse way of doing it. In fact, I managed to relocate the uh, Betterment offices from New York City to New Mexico uh, by plotting on, on the map. So if any of you know the uh, geography of, uh, of North America, you'll know that that's not where it's supposed to be. Um, but really the key point about this slide was that uh, there's a very strong concentration of these types of companies, whatever you want to call them, uh, in Europe and North America. Um, and the other thing to say really is that, that we are seeing an increasing number of launches. Only yesterday Money Farm, which is an Italian company, um, stated their, their launch in the UK. Um, and interestingly, they're offering, I don't know if any of you picked up the, the um, press release, but interestingly, they are going to be offering their, their solutions free to people with investments of less than 10,000 and uh, people with more than one million to invest. And then there's a middle banding somewhere in the middle uh, for those people with uh, assets of uh, ranging between 10 and, and 1 million. So, Interesting space. Now, uh, before I go on to our experience in the US with personal advisor service, I wanted to give you a bit of context of what we're comparing ourselves to. I, again, Ross has mentioned some of the services already offered, uh, but to give you a bit more color, th those that are in this space are already offering online risk tolerance questionnaires. Um, they, have, they make recommendations on portfolios. They've got automatic rebalancing. These are all hygiene factors. Um, Again, Russ mentioned, mentioned this. Those who are more, most successful are doing it on a low-cost basis. So the US market is, is very cost-sensitive. Everything is cheaper there than it is here, effectively. Um, and it is fully automated, so digitization is more advanced. Um, and in the main, the majority of them are doing it on a discretionary basis. So they're offering discretionary advice. But they are evolving. I mean, you know, and I'll share with you our story and where we've come from. You'll see that it's evolved quite significantly. Now, some of them are differentiating themselves through some specialized features. Um, and I'm just going to, this is very idiosyncratic, so it's very, very um, US focused. But just to give you a bit of an idea, um, they do, like, the likes of Betterment and, and Wealthfront particularly offer tax loss harvesting. And this is, a bit like what we used to do with bed and breakfasting, where you're effectively uh, selling your stocks at a loss to offset against CGT. Uh, direct index indexing is another new thing where you're effectively, rather than buying a mutual fund, you're effectively investing in, in stocks directly. Again, it allows you to do uh, tax loss harvesting a lot more effectively. And then finally, the single stock diversification service that some of them offer is where they're taking a single stock and um, investing it in a diversified portfolio. So, as I say, some of them are differentiating the, themselves through um, the use of uh, those specialized services. Now, I want to share with you um, a very, very funny um, ad which Wealthfront produced. Um, and this is, uh, the reason I'm sharing it with you is because it's a really clever way, a comic way, of differentiating themselves against advisors and, and you know, basically setting their stall out. So here we go. Hopefully it will work. No? Try again. I am pressing the button I was told to press. <laughs> 
So I'm looking for a simple way to invest my money. What makes you the best? I'd have to say it's our mobile investment platform. That sounds interesting. What kind of software do you use? Bring in the platform! <laughs> As you can see, the platform allows us to do business anywhere. Couldn't I just use my smartphone? The fax machine has a phone. What about email? Fax it is forever. All we need from you to get started is your last 25 years of bank statements faxed to this number. Is this how faxing works? We're going to set you up with a great retirement plan, kiddo. Same one we use. You don't need that guy. With Wealthfront, you can get a sophisticated, low-cost investment portfolio online in just minutes. Go to Wealthfront.com to start investing today. So I saw some of you laughing. Um, it, it is funny, and it was on primetime TV, and, and interestingly, I saw it here, um, and then I went to the States to visit our offices out there, and it was on TV all the time, so I've seen, I've seen it loads of times. Um, so moving on to the personal advisor service, so this is... Uh, this is basically the service that we launched, that Russ referred to um, in May of last year, so it's fairly new for us. And I wanted to take you, not share with you necessarily the secret sauce, I'm sorry to say, well, as much of it as I possibly can, um, but just take you through the journey that we went on. I think that's probably a lot more interesting than, than the actual details of the service itself. Um, so the PAS, Effectively, it services 30,000 households uh, with 7 million customers. And, and as Ross said, since May of last year, we've, we've uh, seen net cash flow of about 31 billion, just over that now. But the journey was an interesting one because actually, in, in launching or in designing the, the actual uh, service itself, we did an evaluation of our legacy offers. And we had to, we had the advisor services group and asset management services group. Now, the advisor services group was actually a, a sort of a complementary service that, that we offered to those investors that had clients of ours that had more than $500,000 to invest. And it offered effectively situational or one-off type of advice. Now, it was a, a delight to clients, but it didn't actually convert them into the managed service, which is where we effectively made our money, where, our, where the margins were. So... So we thought, right, okay, we need to assess this. Um, the asset management service was, again, complementary to clients with more than $500,000 to invest. It offered ongoing wealth management, discretionary wealth management. And again, it was a, a wonderful small business which had incredible client loyalty. The only problem with that was that it was very people focused. So it wasn't scalable. So again, we had to address that. Um, the other thing was that when we surveyed clients who actually left us, believe you or not, we do have clients who leave us, the biggest bit of feedback they gave us was that it, they, they were leaving us because we didn't offer them advice. And most of our competition, so again, Fidelity was referred to earlier, they were very advice focused. And Fidelity competed with us heavily in this direct space. So when we actually assessed it further, looking at the stats, just to illustrate what I've just said to you, um, the, the bulk of the retail direct industry in the US is actually advised. So of the $8.8 trillion that are in that space, you're looking at 30% of them being self-directed and 70% advised. And yet when you compare that to the composition of our share, which is one, one trillion of the, and this is based on figures um, um, to the end of 2014, so a little bit dated. But our share back in, at the end of 2014, was one trillion of that 8.8. 98% of our customers were self-directed and the rest were advised. So it's a tiny proportion. So the opportunity was vast for us, really. Um, and, you know, it was a no-brainer, really, for us to, to look at launching a model that was very much utilizing that advice space and the opportunity that existed there, uh, but by digitizing it, because we recognized through our asset manage management services that you couldn't carry on uh, on that basis of having a, uh, a service which is not scalable. 
And when we, when we devised personal advisor service, we did a, a quantitative research uh, with some of our clients. We found that um, client, two out of three clients found the advice appealing. They wanted advice, as I've already mentioned. Um, one out of four were happy to pay for it. And then, um, you know, in terms of you know, the, the, the actual market, well, we, we were going after 200 billion plus, really. The other thing which I put up there is, is that we found um, through research that we've done that the, the value of, of advice is, sits approximately at 3%. And we've, we've done this research looking at seven different components, and we call it Advisors Alpha. Um, and basically, our definition of it is, is the difference between uh, the returns that an investor would get if they were being advised, as opposed to what they would get if they were left to their own devices, effectively. Um, so we, 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 know the, we knew, based on the research we did, how important advice was, which is why uh, PAS was, was focused very much on that sort of hybrid model. So who's it for? Um, just very quickly, we've got, um, effectively, it's for clients with 50K to 50 million, so a huge range. Um, and I'll explain well, how we can actually service that huge range. Um, on a scalable basis. It's priced at 30 bips all in, and it's got three different parts to it. We've got the managed portfolio, uh, we've got the advisor relationship, and then obviously the technology bit, which effectively offers a personalized web experience. Now, in terms of the managed portfolio, it isn't as simple as just an investment solution, because one of the things we realized is that when you've got access to advisors, you could end up spending the advisor's time, most of their time, focused on conversations around market conditions and what happened to uh, the portfolio, the client's portfolio, and we wanted to move away from that. So what we did, one of the enhancements in the service that we introduced, which is critical, was um, introduction to goal-based financial planning. So we've moved the conversation away from that sort of market turbulence, what's happening to my portfolio, to one that's very much goal-based because we recognize that people think of their assets in terms of what they can achieve with them, rather than the, uh, the sort of uh, portfolio um, risk measurement um, efficiencies. So, so that's one enhancement. The other thing is the, the advisors, we've got 350 at the moment, we're looking to hire another 100 this year, so a big, big team. Um, but they're dealing with 7 million customers. Um, and I know you'll ask me about the ratios, and I'm happy to share with the, those with you later, but um, effectively, these advisors are certified, uh, they're credentialed, and they have a virtual office. So the, any contact they have, whether it's reactive or proactive with the client, is done virtually through video conferencing and um, sort of a sh sharing of, of, of PCs. And finally, as far as the technology is concerned, I don't, I don't want to dwell too much on it because I think Russ did a good job of, of taking you through the landscape of what's available um, out there in terms of um, uh, capability. But what we did is we learned from our mistakes in the asset management services, we mapped all the processes, and we've effectively automated those as much as we possibly can. But, I mean, I've, I've got a little video, so we'll take you through the experience, so I won't dwell on that too much. But, you know, just one couple of other things to say that the, the technology obviously is very important. The algorithms that we use allow us to very closely look at the goals, prioritize the goals, and then look to fund them. And that's what we're really heavily relying on. Uh, the tools that we use in terms of risk measurement and profiling are critical because those are the things that allow us to actually build the asset allocation models in a correct way. Um, and what that allows us to do is then move the advisor away from spending their time on doing that work and actually giving a service, and that's how we're differentiating ourselves. And that service is around behavioral coaching. Now, one thing we have done is that we've progressed by, from our experience of, um, in the DC space, We've also progressed that sort of behavioral coaching on, on <coughs> up um, by using nudges quite prolifically. So, sorry, I should see if I can play this video now. Help! Sorry, I just need to... 
Okay. Introducing Vanguard Personal Advisor Services. We've designed a new financial advice service to serve you better. Here's how it works. You partner with a Vanguard advisor to help you develop a financial plan to reach your goals. A Vanguard advisor starts by getting to know you and your unique financial situation. Then, the advisor partners with you to create a custom-tailored plan just for you. Once you agree to the final plan, the advisor puts it into action and starts to build your portfolio with a mix of low-cost diversified stock and bond investments based on your goals. You can track all of your investments in one place. You can review your portfolio and your goals online anytime. Get a snapshot of your total portfolio. See how your investments are performing. Keep an eye on your progress toward your goals. And you can check it all out from any device. A Vanguard advisor reviews and rebalances your portfolio on a regular basis to keep you on course to meet your goals. And you'll receive progress reports every quarter. You can call or email a Vanguard advisor at your convenience. And with our easy to use video conferencing service, you can video chat with an advisor from the comfort of your own home. Partnering with a Vanguard advisor can help give you greater confidence that you're doing all you can to reach your goals. And just as you'd expect from Vanguard, you get it all at a low cost. Get started today. So I, I know I've got a couple of minutes because I, I see the boards going up at the back. Um, just coming back to the UK realities, is there an advice gap? Absolutely. I think Hugo very eloquently um, described <coughs> what that advice gap is and, and the fact that um, RDRs have actually heightened it. Um, in terms of the pharma, uh, financial market, um, advice market review, um, we responded to uh, the um, consultation paper and in our response, we, we suggested a couple of options that the FCA perhaps should consider. And that was really, I mean, we recognize the value of advice because clients need advice in order to make good financial decisions. But we, didn't, we don't necessarily feel that every single individual needs that individualistic um, advice. So on that basis, we suggested maybe having a look at a, a scalable advice um, sort of uh, service. Um, and then the other thing which I think you know, is really important for us is, is, is for, for, for the UK market to be successful in this space, we need further clarification around simplified advice and what that actually means um, and the proportionality of, 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 of that suitability. Um, a couple of other things we, we, we suggested was around the decision tree, again, clarification around that and what fund, you know, those fund selection tools that we already see and what they mean and what, what, you know, how they should be deemed. Are there personal recommendations or not? Um, and then finally, we, we suggested maybe um, looking at pre-approved simple funds, simple solutions that um, could be sold on a latch touch advice basis. And then finally, as far as the key takeaways are concerned, um, I think there's a lot to be learned uh, from the US market, and certainly we're trying to learn from it here, believe it or not, in our European business. Um, clients do definitely want to interact in different ways. Uh, there's no doubt about it, and it's not necessarily just the millennials who want to deal with us um, through digital capability. Um, we do have, believe it or not, in the US, a lot of clients with more than one million dollars to invest who want to deal with us um, through PA, the PAS service. Um, the, the, as far as the value add to the clients, those need to be communicated and hopefully for those of you in this room it's, it's beyond portfolio uh, construction. Um, Russ has already said it very eloquently. Um, and finally, life in a post-RDR world, you know, the basic things need to be done well. So low cost is critical. There, there is a focus on cost here. There has been since since RDR, and there will continue to be. And that's me done, so hopefully we've got time for some questions. Perfect.